right, guys, we are back in a 2LT 2020 C8 Chevrolet Corvette. We've been driving this all week in the snow, in the winter, on the stock Michelin Pilot Sport all-season four tires. Whew, that was a mouthful. This Corvette is identically specced to the 2LT Coupe we had not too long ago, earlier in 2020, except it's a convertible. And I will say, I think this is the way to go for the new Corvette. You retain all of your trunk space while the top is folded down. If you look in the trunk, you still have the same amount of trunk space. You can fit a golf bag back here very easily. Soft closed trunk lid, which is very cool. Up front, in the front, now a double press and hold so you don't accidentally pop it open. You've got a decent amount of space in there too. This is a very practical sports car. We've been driving it every day. It's been getting incredible fuel economy. Check out Daily Motors fuel economy test if you want to see what type of MPG numbers we get on the highway. And another thing I really like about the convertible is that you can put the top down at speeds up to 30 miles per hour. So let's go ahead, lower the top. happens relatively quickly. There you go, and you're done. Raise up the back window. There's actually a little bit less buffeting in this convertible than there was, at least for my memory, in the coupe. See if we can make our way out of this parking lot here. I mean, this is how you Corvette in the wintertime. Top down, <laughs> sideways in the snow. Gotta love it. So just to give you guys an idea, we're going to put the top back up because it is a little bit cold. But you can do this all the way up to 30 miles an hour, which is pretty cool. And all the windows automatically come up. Great. This is such a fun sports car to daily drive. It's comfortable. It's incredibly practical. It looks the business. And the big surprise this week has been there's actually some winter capability in this C8 Corvette in stock form with the all season tires. We originally booked a Corvette with winter tires, but GM said, you know what? Why don't you try the all seasons? I think you're gonna be impressed. We took it as a little bit of a challenge. You're not gonna get through super deep snow, but I think it'll get you through most situations. If you're daily driving your Corvette, you take it to work, you get stuck in a snowstorm on the way home, you're gonna be fine. Let's talk a little bit more about comfort. So we did a pretty long road trip in this car and I found these seats to be really nice on shorter journeys. They keep you well bolstered, they keep you nicely uh, supported around hard cornering. On longer trips though, after about an hour behind the wheel, I noticed that, I'm going into full dimmer mode here, I noticed that I was getting a little bit sore and getting kind of some lower back pain. incredible how well this car puts its power down. It's 34 degrees outside right now. All season tires, a little bit wet. But right from a dig, it hooks up really well. And again, 
mid-engine layout is really good for this sort of traction. And I think that's one reason why it does so well in the snow and in inclement weather, is it has a lot of weight over the rear end to put that power down. sound yeah the more I drive this thing the more I just think this is one of the best sports cars to come out this is a different type of Corvette I said this in my last video in my initial review this is a more comfortable refined experience I mean I think this is kind of a little bit more of a move towards a European style supercar and this just the just the base standard Corvette we're not getting into Z06s yet. We don't have any special Grand Sport packages or anything. This is still the standard Corvette. It's not even a Z51 package. And it's so good to drive. During some performance driving scenarios, like for example when I was drifting around in the snow this week, I was kind of wishing for a shifter down here so that I could change gears on the fly while I had some steering angle going. Sometimes when you're crossed up, the wheel's upside down or sideways, you don't really know which paddle does which. Um, again, a minor gripe and something that I'm sure you would rarely run into as an issue in uh, high performance driving, but just something that I was kind of hoping for, just a little bit more involvement with a shifter. These button shifters are okay, but they can get a little bit confusing sometimes. And uh, I've gotten a little crossed up with drive and reverse a number of times because the, the, the switches are so similar. The way this thing puts power down is insane. I actually didn't really drive this Corvette in the wet the last time I had it. It was pretty much only in dry scenarios. and It's amazing how much you can trust this car to hook up, give you traction, and then when it does break away, it's super progressive, especially for a mid-engine car. traction control system figures it out. Just amazing. And then my favorite thing about the Corvette is that it just settles down beautifully when you just want to relax. Put in a tour mode, the exhaust quiets down substantially. Ride quality is fantastic. It does have a V4 mode that it switches into four cylinder mode, deactivates half the V8, and uh, you can kind of save a little bit of fuel, but I don't really think it does much, to be honest. Chevrolet gives you all the comfort and convenience you could want out of a sports car like this. We've got a heated steering wheel, press of a button, very convenient and easy to access. The heated seats and cooled seats work super well. This climate control strip is a little bit of a mishmash at first, but once you get used to it after a few days, uh, you can pretty quickly and easily access everything. 
And of course, this is an incredibly driver-focused cockpit. I mean, forget the passenger, they don't matter. It's all about the driver. And uh, yeah, that's pretty obvious just by looking at the space. The last Corvette that we had, so just talking about interior quality here, the last Corvette that we had had a pretty big panel gap and uh, discrepancy right here. And this one I see they have fixed it. And um, everyone complained about it. It was the only thing and the entire car that was just a little bit off. I'm very impressed with how nice this interior is. The speaker surrounds, the leather, all the fit and finish. There are no rattles or shakes in this thing. Granted, it only has 2,000 miles on it, but it seems to be really well built and well put together. When GM does put their effort into engineering a quality car, they do a pretty nice job, and this C8 Corvette is an example of that. Oh, we're just cruising here. Let's do a little bit more top-down driving. <laughs> there we go. Auto up on both windows. You really get to hear the exhaust with the top down, and that's probably the best part about the convertible. Of course, you can do that with the coupe, but the T-top takes all the truck space up. Heated steering wheel is great for cold weather top-down driving. The heated seats are nice. Gosh, if markups weren't so ridiculous and outrageous on these cars right now, you could actually get your hands on one, I would consider a new Corvette. It's just that good. It's so much fun to drive. comfortable here 50 miles an hour 55 miles an hour I wouldn't want to cruise on the highway with the top down and 32 degree weather but for a little stint here and there this is perfectly acceptable and very pleasant and I'm sure everyone who sees me right now thinks I'm crazy and I'm all right with that let's put things back up here 20 28 27 miles an hour just hold it here. And the top goes back up. <laughs> it's got to be pretty wild for people to see this happening while uh, the car's in motion. And we're off. cars that I just don't want to stop driving. It does get a lot of attention and that can be a little bit irritating sometimes but I'm really surprised at how easy of a car this is to just get into, drive, and live with every day. 
makes every journey just a little bit more exciting. And if you don't mind a little bit of attention, there's nothing wrong with it because you are kind of universally loved when you're driving this car. You don't get too many bad reactions. Everyone is giving you the thumbs up. A lot of smiles, a lot of photos. People will pace you to kind of get a picture of the car. So you do have to kind of be aware of what's going on and who is uh, on their phones taking pictures of your car while you're driving so they don't run into you. But right now, at least, it has a little bit of that celebrity vibe to it. It's new, it's special. People aren't seeing a lot of them on the road. And um, I think that's okay. It's part of the ownership experience. One thing I do really like about driving this Corvette at night is that you turn the dimmer switch all the way to the darkest setting and you get this minimalist dark mode and then you can turn your mirror to the digital setup. It's great. You can see everything. Lots of rearward visibility and uh, you're not distracted by all these dashboard lights and you just see your speedo and your head-up display which you can very easily control turn on turn off with some buttons on the left here really nice ergonomics and uh, just some cool practical stuff for this new Corvette so this square rectangular steering wheel is weird and whatever you want to call it it does look kind of strange but it has a really nice practical application and one it allows you to see the gauge display really easily and two you can steer with your knee like a pro in this thing. It's not an Alcantara, so it's really grippy. The leather uh, works really well with jeans or any synthetic pants. I found myself using this on the highway whenever I needed to use my hands for whatever else. And it's nice to be able to steer the car if you ever need to with your knee. Good Formula One driver stuff right there. I really like the infotainment. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto integrate seamlessly. Uh, this Bose sound system is fantastic. We can do a quick little sound test of this in this. The infotainment, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all integrate seamlessly and very nicely. You've got a home button for everything. This touchscreen is super fast, probably one of the quicker screen systems on the market. Um, I wish all infotainments were this responsive. While we're here, why not? Let's go in and do a quick sound system test with this Bose Performance Series sound system. It's gotta be just about impossible for the passenger to adjust the volume in this car. I think it's kind of funny. sound systems this nice in sports cars and sometimes bows can be a little bit of a hit or miss and in this case I'm really impressed with the sound quality it's very very nice
it's almost more fun just driving around using the paddle shifters in this car. You have a good amount of approach and departure ride height. Not always scraping in this thing. No nose lift on this car, but honestly, if you're careful with your entrance angles, you don't really need it. And it'll do donuts on demand. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this one. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Feel free to check out my previous Corvette C8 reviews. We've got a first impressions video that got a couple, few million views and uh, another one afterwards that really delves into kind of living with this car and what it's like. Today's video was just kind of an update and a refresh and I wanted to talk about how the convertible worked. And uh, yeah, it's really nice. I, I think this is the C8 Corvette that I would swing for. And uh, in this spec with the gray and the red interior, it's pretty ideal. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.